Today I have for you one of my all-time favorite tricks and this works for GRE and GMAT quant questions. There's a reason I called it phenomenal in the title because you are absolutely going to love it and it involves average speed. Let me get straight to the point. Many people would guess that if I drive to work at 20 miles per hour and I drive back from work at 30 miles per hour that my average speed would be 25 miles per hour. You add the two up, 20 plus 30, and divide by two to get 25. But I'm here to tell you that that's not how you do it. That won't get you the right answer, even though that's what 95% of students or more think you're supposed to do. This is why this trick is so special and so important. It always comes up on the tests. Here's the amazing secret. When you're averaging speeds, the distance doesn't actually matter. You'll get the same average speed no matter what distance you think of. It's an amazing fact, but you can try it out for yourself and it's true. Whenever you've got two speeds and you're trying to average them, as long as we know the ratio of the routes that they're taken, as in the same route there, the same route back, or the same route there and twice the route back, we can work out the average speed. What I used to teach students a few years back was therefore make up a distance of D and then use algebra to calculate the average speed. But then I came up with a better way. And that's the crux of this video. You make up a distance that is a multiple of both speeds. That's right, you're allowed to just make up a distance and it won't affect the final average speed. And therefore you wanna make up a distance that's a multiple of both speeds to make the calculations easier. Let's go back to that example I chose of driving to work at 20 miles per hour and driving back from work at 30 miles per hour. What distance shall we make up? Let's make up a distance of 60 miles for my drive to work because 60 is a multiple of both 20 and 30. Now you're gonna to need to follow along closely because it's not immediately obvious what we do with that distance. What we do is we calculate the time it took on my way to work and the time it took on my way back from work. So on my way to work, it was 60 miles, that's the distance we made up, and I was driving at 20 miles per hour. So using the triangle of distance at the top and speed times time at the bottom. To calculate time, we do distance divided by speed. 60 miles divided by 20 miles per hour gives us the answer of it took me three hours. Now we do the same thing for the way back. On the way back, it was 60 miles and we went at 30 miles per hour. So distance of 60 divided by speed of 30 gives us two hours. But now what, and why did we work out those two times? Here's a formulaic way of thinking about average speed. Average speed equals total distance over total time. Just like normal speed equals distance over time, average speed equals total distance over total time. Can you tell me what our total distance was in the example I just gave? Many of you might have said 60, but it's actually 120. Think about it, we went to work and then went back from work. 60 plus 60, our total distance is 120. Many people think it's just the distance on the way there, but be careful, it's the total distance. So 120 in this case. And our total time, three hours on the way there, two hours on the way back, that's five hours. 120, the distance, divided by the time of five hours, is I believe 24 miles per hour. So my average is 24 miles per hour, which believe it or not is, half, is not halfway between 20 and 30. It's closer to 20 miles an hour. It's closer to the slower speed. The way I like to think about it is that we spend more time going at the slower speed and that's why the average skews towards the slower speed. But whether you like that or not, that is the actual method. We make up a distance, calculate the time, calculate the time, 
and then do average speed equals total distance over total time. Believe it or not, that covers how to do almost every average speed question. The only thing they can do is make the example slightly more wordy and slightly more complicated. So that's what this real example is going to cover. Let's say Philip walked to work at an average speed of four miles per hour, but then he drove back along a route that was twice as long as the route he took to work. If his overall average speed for both journeys was eight miles per hour, how fast did he drive back from work? Now, don't be tempted to say 12 miles an hour because eight miles per hour is halfway between four and 12. That won't work with average speeds as we've talked about earlier. We're gonna use our absolute favorite new method of making up a distance. What distance shall we make up? Let's make up a nice round number that's a multiple of both four and eight. Say 40 miles. Let's say his walk to work was 40 miles. Doesn't have to make sense because that would be a crazy long route to walk to work. It just makes sense mathematically. Okay, we're gonna follow the same procedure. We're gonna work out the time that he took. 40 miles at four miles per hour is 10 hours. And now we have the average speed of eight miles per hour. What are we gonna do with that? Well, we're gonna take a look at our formula. The average speed equals total distance over total time. We know the average speed is eight. And think about it, we know the total distance, right? 40 miles on the way to work, and then 80 miles on the way back. Because remember, the question said he took a route that was twice as long. So what's our total distance? It would be 40 plus 80, 120 miles. Think again about the distance speed time triangle. We have a total distance of 120 miles and we have an average speed of eight miles per hour. Notice how again and again, we're using the triangle to make the next step, make the next step. 120 miles is our total distance, average speed of eight, and the triangle tells us to do distance divided by speed. That's total distance divided by average speed. 120 divided by eight gives us, I believe, 15 hours. So we know that he took 15 hours in total to do the entire way there and way back. But remember, he took 10 hours on the way to work. So how long did he take on the way back? Well, if the total time was 15 hours and on the way to work, it was 10 hours, he took five hours on the way back. But I know what you're thinking. The question wasn't how long did he take on the way back? The question was, what speed did he go at on the way back? Well, again, we're gonna use that triangle. The distance on the way back was 80 miles, and we've just worked out he did that in five hours. 80, that's a distance divided by time, which is five, is, I believe, 16. So he must have been going at 16 miles per hour. That last one would definitely be a 165 question on the GRE or a 700 level question on the GMAT. But I think you get the idea, right? You make up a distance and then you apply that distance speed time triangle again and again and again to make progress all the way to the final result. But the key step is making up a distance and realizing that average speed is not just the simple average of the two speeds. I really hope you loved this phenomenal average speed trick as much as I do. If it's all too much to take in, do watch the video again, slower and do it step by step. And of course, do questions online as many as you can on average speed. But thank you above all for watching. Please leave a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna comment and subscribe if you wanna subscribe and see you soon.